Hey yo, what is up everybody? I'm not gonna wave because I'll break all these command blocks in front of me. I am back again with the block breaker. As you can see, it's a pretty simple machine as compared to the other ones. We've got the quarry here, which is four blast furnaces surrounded by four stone cutters and a campfire underneath. The same with the generator, furnace, campfire, and block breaker. But the block breaker, armor stand. But the block breaker is a little bit more complex, requires a few more machines, but not quite as many as the macerator or the quarry. So what you need is a block breaker, armor stand, on top of an iron block, underneath the grindstone, empty space, stone cutter, and a hopper. So what's going on when we look at the code is it's checking to make sure each and every one of those blocks is placed in the right place. There we go, grindstone, and we got the stone cutter, and finally the hopper. And if the machine is built correctly, what it will do is allow you to break blocks automatically. Now ignore that log behind it, that's just there so I can place blocks underneath it and it will break them. So we can do it with glass. You won't get the glass back, but you can do it with pretty much any block. So pop a dropper down, it will break any block. So if you need if you need an automated way of breaking blocks, you just got to feed them into this area here, and then you will get a block broken every one second or so, because it's all set up to a timer. So what happens is it checks to see if the machine is built. If that is true, it powers this redstone. Now what's happening here is it's checking to see if the seconds are equal to one. Now if I do quickly a scoreboard objectives set display and we'll do seconds, you will be able to see what I've done what I've done here is set up a timer. So you'll see it flash between zero and one. Zero and one. So that I can make things happen on a pulse without using a redstone clock. So as you can see, every time that's true, it pulses these comparators and repeaters here. But what this set of blocks is doing here, these two, or this one, is it's checking to see if air exists here. So if, if, if there's air here, it knows there's not a block there. And so what it's going to do is lock this redstone here. Because what we're, having, what we're doing here is we're testing the player's fuel. See if we've got enough fuel, because these machines require fuel. They're, they're part of the you know, the, the machinery system that also requires the generators, the nuclear reactor, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. So it's going to test if we've got the fuel. If we do, it's going to destroy the block and it's going to remove our fuel. So that bit's easy. But what we need to do is make sure that the fuel isn't getting taxed constantly. So that's why we're detecting to see if there's air there. If there's air there, it locks the redstone, preventing this from being fired, regardless of whether all of this is in place or not. Otherwise, it, this would fire every second, constantly depleting fuel. If I were to break this redstone, just for the sake of demonstration, I'll pop a block there. It's not going to get broken, but you can see now how this is no longer firing because air is, pres air is no longer present, so this is no longer reading true. Oh god, I've just stuck an E in there, haven't I? Yep, there we go. There we go. Right, so this is no longer reading true. So when I put this redstone back, it will break the block, and now because air is there, this is now reading true, which is bricking the signal, stopping this from firing repeatedly. So every time we put a block there, it gets broken. And the system resets and it only ever takes one fuel so yeah that is pretty much exactly how that works so if you just look at the code here we're just looking to see iron block is iron block is a below it and then below that iron block negative two we want a grindstone negative three is where we're going to break the block so we're going to look at negative four for a stone cutter and then we're going to look at negative five for a hopper. If all that is true, i.e. the machine has been assembled correctly, it will then check the timing. And every time that timing is at a desired point, it will pulse. Every time that pulses and there's not air there, it will trigger the command to check the fuel. It will then break the block. And then it will then remove the fuel. So it's pretty a dawn straightforward if you ask me you guys ladies and gentlemen boys and girls so i hope you find some use for the old block breaker setup in your world 
Um, if you do, don't forget to hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I will I'll see you next time. Uh, bye bye now.